Good morning, everyone who's joined us online. Um, I'm glad you've decided to take a few minutes of your busy morning to attend this session. Um, we're currently going through unprecedented time, and for some of us, uh, marketing and selling activities have been put on hold. Uh, it's been, you know, from a marketing perspective, for example, at Workbooks, we've quieted down our activities quite dramatically in the last few days. And um, we were thinking it may be an opportunity for all of us to really reflect on what has worked well and what needs to be improving in our own organization and maybe start to work out how to do you know the, the things that are really working well more often so it may be time for all of us to review and develop a new look or you know have a new insight into our sales and marketing strategy so we are ready for when things return to normal and maybe, maybe for some of us, uh, it may be start to look into how we can implement ABM in our own organization. So Alex and I this morning as your host, um, we're going to be focusing on ABM. Yes, we are working from home, so we are both working remotely. Uh, we have done so for about a week now. And please bear with us if the technology lets us down at some point during the webinar. Hopefully it won't, but you never know, right? So Alex is leading the sales effort at Workbooks. Uh, hi, Alex, you're online, right? Hi, hi everyone. And I'm leading the marketing efforts for uh, Workbooks. And we thought it would be good for both of us to be on that webinar to provide both input from a marketing perspective, but also from a sales perspective, because for ABM, both marketing and sales organizations have to be working together very closely. So we thought if both you know, of us are in the webinar, then you can get the insight and the perspective from uh, you know, each, uh, each, each side of, um, of the organization. So over the next 30 minutes ago uh, or so, we're going to be covering uh, what is ABM, the type of ABM that you could be running in your organization, how to approach your ABM strategy, and what infrastructure do you need to have in place in your organization in order to support ABM? So what is ABM? Let's start with uh, you know, the, the basics. Um, ABM has been trending in the B2B world for many, many years. And for many of us, and I have to say for quite a few years at the beginning of the ABM uh, trend, I was seeing it as a buzzword something that you know i was aspiring to do but something that i really thought in reality i couldn't really see how i could do that in my own organization we've all heard organizations spending hundreds of thousands of pounds doing abm for targeting a very small sets of accounts and we've all felt that this is this just was not for us right but actually, the practice of ABM can be applied to many businesses. So it's not just reserved to, you know, top organizations targeting only strategic enterprise accounts. So at Workbooks, we use ABM. We are a small CRM vendor targeting the mid-market, but we have an ABM strategy. And I'll give you a little bit more insight into that strategy later on. So this webinar is more about demystifying ABM. It's about giving you a sense of, yes, you potentially could apply an ABM strategy into your organization, but also to give you some practical tips on how you can start doing ABM in your own organization, and how you would do that more importantly. So let's start with a definition. The traditional definition of our ABM is treating an account or a small subset of accounts as a market in their own rights. So that means really starting to hone in on one account specifically or a subset of account, but still in a small quantity and really looking at the market and understanding what are the characteristics of the market and how you should go to market uh, to those accounts. So as you can see, it's about targeting, it's about personalization, making sure that everything that you're doing is very relevant and personalized to that small set of accounts that you want to go after. An ABM approach won't be successful unless marketing and sales 
are completely aligned. This is not a marketing specific approach. This is not a sales specific approach. It's both teams have to work hand in hand in order to execute on an ABM strategy. And what do we do you know, in sales and in marketing around an ABM strategies? We're looking at the key business issues that are facing our target market. We are mapping those to individuals within those accounts, and we are tailoring and personalizing our campaign to address those specific issues. Yeah? So, yeah. go on. Yeah, no, I, I think just to add to that, the, the key there is, you know, you've probably all heard the term account-based marketing, but you've also got account-based account selling, and really account-based marketing, account-based selling go hand in hand. Uh, they have to work together uh, for ABM to be effective. And, and I also probably include customer success into that as well. Uh, so when you're looking at a team within the business fully aligned, you need your uh, customer care manager, your customer success team, uh, as well as sales, as well as marketing, all working together uh, when implementing an ABM strategy for it to be effective. And, and just to add um, to Alex's point, you know, you can do ABM strategy both to your prospect, so to uh, accounts that you want to get uh, within your organization as customers, but you can also apply an ABM strategy to your existing base, to your kind of top, top customers, your tier one. And you can basically build ABM strategies to reinforce customer advocacy, you know, upsell and cross-sell, et cetera. Yeah, so it, it can be applied to both new business and existing business as well. Exactly. So why do it? You know, why start an ABM strategy? I guess the statistics on that slide said it all, right? It's because it has a substantial positive impact on your business performance. So if you look at the quotes that are on the screen, most organizations initially adopt an ABM strategy to improve critical business results, such as pipeline efficiency, expansion, customer lifetime value. And then when you start going into the details of, you know, let, let's get into the, the details of where people are really seeing and how much benefits are they seeing, these numbers talk for themselves. 93% of B2B companies say ABM is extremely or very important to their marketing efforts. So these are the people who've implemented ABM already. Companies that have been using ABM for at least one year have seen a 10% increase in revenue, while 19% reported over 30% of revenue growth. 87% of B2B marketers agree that ABM delivers a higher return on investment than any other marketing activities that they are doing. And companies that have implemented ABM have reported an 84% improvement in reputation, but also 74% improvement in customer relationship. So these are pretty impressive statistics that kind of really demonstrate if you are engaging in an ABM strategy, you will see some positive return for your organization and for you know the investment that you're putting into sales and marketing. Yeah, and I think uh, just, just to add to that, the, the other area that is worth considering when you're looking at why, why do ABM uh, is that it is pretty much focused to uh, B2B companies. If you're selling uh, pro strategy or your go-to-market is, is B2C, it's probably not right for you. Uh, and I'd also say that you want to look closely at your approach to market. So if, you, if your product or service is, is fairly complex with a value of probably, a, you know, £30,000 plus with a sales cycle of, you know, five plus months, ABM, again, will be very well suited to your go-to-market strategy. If you're selling more transactionally, uh, you know, short sales cycle, not very complex uh, product or service and under 30K, ABM may not be right for you. I'm not saying it, it, it won't be, but with the amount of uh, cost and effort that is required to make ABM effective, it, it may not make sense. So that's another thing worth considering when you're looking at, at ABM, just making sure that your product or service you know, makes sense to, to take the ABM approach with. Yep, 
completely agree. So I, I think you know AVM is worth having a look at um, because it can really um, you know change the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of your sales and marketing effort. Okay, so let, let's start to dig a little bit deeper into the different types of ABM that organization can implement. In reality, there's three types of ABM with you know, a, a kind of a variation in spending and more importantly about focus and personalization. So imagine those three types of ABM on a personalization scales. On the left, you've got strategic ABM. Strategic ABM is really your very high personalization and very, very short or very, very small target audience. We're talking one to 10 accounts that you can manage through a strategic ABM accounts. That's the maximum you can cope with. The more you move to the right, so the more, the more you move to ABM light or programmatic ABM, the less personal uh, or personalization you will have. You will still have personalization, but it will be of a less degree. It will be less granular. It will be to a lesser degree. And you're going to see that you are on the left side with very high touch because you are very focused. You've got a very, very small of account where you're putting all of your marketing tactics and campaigns towards. And then the more you move to the right, the more it's going to be lower touch. You're still going to be trying to do very personalized. You're going to still try and be relevant, but you're going to do it more at scale. And obviously, if you look at spending, the more to the left you are, the more spending you're going to be putting into, again, sorry, one specific account, the more to, you move to the, to the right, the less you're going to be spending on each account. Yeah, so I'm going to go now into each of those to kind of try and explain the specificities of all of those uh, type of ABM account marketing. So strategic ABM is what the ABM purist will say ABM actually is, yeah? And as I say, when I first heard about ABM, I thought that was the only ABM you could do, strategic ABM. So for strategic ABM, we're talking at a small set of accounts that you've identified you really want to get as customers. The personalization is at maximum level. It's account specific. So everything that you're doing within your marketing and sales approach is related to that specific account, the um, uh, demographics of that account, the situation, the revenue, the, you know, the actual um, strategy of that account. You're going to get a huge amount of intelligence on that specific account that will help you define what type of messaging and tactics you're going to employ to try and get that customer on board. So it's account specific, but it's also persona specific. So within that account, who are you going to engage with? And we're talking roles, but we're talking also individuals and try to understand what make those individuals stick. So as you can hear, it's personalization, what I would call on steroids. This is where your entire campaign is very, very granular very, very personalized, extremely relevant to where that organization is in its life cycle, et cetera, and very timely. That demands a lot of effort from a marketing and sales perspective at the forefront to gather all the intelligence that you need in order to be that, to, to execute on that level of personalization. This type of ABM requires massive level of investment in terms of time, resources, and intelligence. This is aimed at very large accounts, yeah, larger than your average. And typically, it's enterprise accounts, of course, but it's also where you know the sales is going to be more complex than your usual. In one of the business I was working at before um, in infrastructure, we would only do strategic ABM on companies that would give us a deal or a revenue um, of more than one million pounds. 
Anything below that, we would not consider doing an ABM approach because we would consider the strategic ABM was the only ABM we wanted to do. And we would spend thousands and thousands of pounds on one account. We would create specific uh, microsites, direct mail piece. We would spend an enormous amount of money on intelligence to really understand what's going on. We would track engagement at an individual level. I mean, this is really laser focused. Yeah. So personalization for strategic ABM, as I said, is on steroid. And that's the kind of the ultimate ABM approach that you can have. But there's other approach that you can have, as I showed you in the previous slide. So let's go to, um, sorry, I think to have lost one of my slides for some reason. <laughs> ABM lights. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. I can, uh, I can uh, take you through that one. I don't know what happened there. So ABM light is you take strategic ABM, but you tune it down a little bit. So it's still for larger than usual um, accounts. It's still for you know more complex type of selling, but you're expanding um, your remit a little bit more. You're looking for a small subset of organization that share characteristics, that have similar attributes or challenges, or that are you know embarking on similar initiatives. So you're not looking at 10 accounts anymore. You're talking at maybe up to 100 accounts, but all these accounts have some characteristic in common. And what you're trying to do is to be as personalized as you can, probably not as much as you would on strategic ABM, but still trying to be very focused on very, very targeted. You're not going to be able to do it on an account basis the same way as you've done it for strategic, but you're going to be leveraging far more those common attributes that those few organizations have, and you're going to hone in on your campaign towards those specific attributes, and you're going to try and really drive your messages and tactics around those. So ABM Lights is already more feasible for you know, a, a lot of organizations. You have a wider pool of organizations that you're trying to target, you don't need to invest as much in terms of personalization and really intelligence on those accounts, even though you still need to do that. But it's kind of, it's not on steroid, it's personalization at a high level, but more manageable and a little bit more at scale, I guess. So that's ABM Light. And then the last one um, that I would say is ABM at even further scale is what we would call programmatic ABM. And it's really one too many relationship. Your audience still has something in common, yeah? Because you need to find that common denominator to start to be targeted and personalized. But that may be more, you know, those organizations are within a specific vertical. They fit a specific type of criteria like revenue bandwidth, uh, um, you know, it could be, you know, I want to target the mid market. So organizations that are between, let's say, 50 million to, you know, 200 million in revenue, whatever you, the criteria that you're choosing. But they have to have something in common, probably not as much as the ABM light type organization, but they have a common denominator across. And then you can start to be personalized. You know, you can start doing more specific marketing activities to those organizations within that programmatic ABM. So that is programmatic ABM is really your personalization at scale, where the personalization at the top of the funnel or, you know, at the beginning of the engagement is mainly automated through, for example, marketing automation tools. Um, and then the further those accounts move into the buying cycle, then that personalization, personalization sorry, becomes uh, greater, but that's through individual sales relationship and engagement. So beginning of the engagement, more automated personalization, and the more we move into the buying cycle, more highly personalized through one-on-one -on -one relationship with your, your sales team. So, to summarize the last few slides, you have varying scale of personalization across your ABM spectrum, which means that ABM principles can really be applied for most businesses. 
So let's have a look at how you do it. Uh, sorry, Alex, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so I think <clears throat> the only thing I'd add there is th th this is a kind of general overview and guideline. Obviously, you can change the numbers uh, to suit your business accordingly. And one of the key areas that drive the numbers, uh, strategic or ABM light or programmatic, is the total addressable market. So you need to understand that if you're going to go after a particular vertical or a particular set of uh, customers, that the overall value within that group of customers is big enough to justify uh, the budget and investment that you're going to have on, on the program. Obviously, as Christo said, some customers you know, you can have a champagne budget and others you might have a sparkling water budget, but uh, there's sorts of things you need to figure out based on the size of the deals and the size of the market that, you, that you're going after and then apply the ABM principles to that. And I think there's some further slides coming now about targeting and, and, and uh, identifying your um, target customers and personas. Okay, so three types of ABM that you can implement. And as Alex said, you really need to look at your own business to see which one, or maybe a combination of, because you could actually be running in your own organization some ABM light program, as well as, for example, some programmatic ABM. But only you can decide within the organization and the type of organization you are and your selling structure and etc. only you can decide which ABM type of programs you can, you know, are, are the most um, applicable to your business. So, how do you get started with ABM? What do you need to do in order to start an ABM program? The first thing you need to do is to identify those accounts that you want to focus on with your ABM strategy. It sounds pretty obvious, but actually that's probably one of the hardest things that you need to do from an ABM perspective. And as Alex said, you need to really take into consideration the potential of your market. So really understand how much revenue can you get from that target audience? And is it worth investing a lot of resources and, and time into targeting that specific market um, you know, to, to a, a very high uh, uh, level? So how, you know, what advice we would, we would give you on how do you define your ideal customer profile? Well, the first thing that um, we would recommend is to look at your existing base and look at the existing customers that you have that have been extremely successful with your products and services, because these seems to be, you know, the type of organization that potentially you want to get more of. So it's like, you know, really thinking about, you know, you, you're looking for the lookalike um, of those specific customers. So at Workbooks, we've taken that route and we've looked at our existing custom, customer base and we looked at what are the customers that, you know, were giving us a good level of revenue and that had really, really benefited from leveraging our, our products and services. And we kind of thought, okay, these are, if you wish, an ideal customer, you know, what are the lookalikes within the markets and what type of organization and more importantly, which organization fit that profile? And that's where you start looking into, you know, criteria like demographics, industries, geographical coverage, the size of the business, so how many employees and what is your sweet spot for the services and products that you're offering, the revenue of those organizations, because usually revenue, you know, will impact how much money they're spending with you, depending on what products and services you're offering. There might be other factors that you want to consider. You know, it might be, for example, in B2B for uh, technology, uh, it might be, you know, what technology they're currently using, you know, their maturity related to technology. So are they an early adopters of technology? Are they more of a laggard? I mean, there's so many criteria that you can consider. And again, it will depend, uh, you know, um, on, on what your business looks like. But it's really, really important to spend a fair amount of time identifying what the ideal customer profile is. Because what you yeah. don't want to be doing is spending time and resources focusing on a target audience that's basically is not right for you. Yeah, and if you look at the research um, on this, according to the 2019 Topo account based benchmark research, as, example, as an example, um, organizations with a strong ideal customer profile achieved a 68% higher account win rate 
So, you know, you can't underestimate the the strength of doing this properly. I, you know, having a strong ideal customer profile and spending the time up front on getting that right will really pay dividends in the future. Yep. So that's the first thing that we recommend you do and spend time on. The second element that we think is absolutely critical is identifying your core buying personas. So in B2B, we all know um, that there are multiple stakeholders uh, in, you know, in, um, uh, in the buying process. So you want to really hone in on to who are those key personas. So who are the key people within an organization that buy your technology or your product or your services? Who are they? What is their role in the purchasing decision? So where do they get involved into that buying process? What is their individual goals and objectives? So as an individual, they all have a responsibility within the business. What is that? You know, what is motivating them to do A, B and C in their, in their own role? What is their pain points and their challenges? What is their KPIs? How do they get measured in their own role? What, you know, what keeps them awake at night? Um, and, you know, how, what they're trying to do to address that. And also, you might want to also look into what are the common objections that you hear from those kind of personas? There are many persona templates available online, and um, I'd be quite happy to share, you know, the one that we're using ourselves. Um, if you want to get a copy, you know, just ask at the end of the webinar and I'll email it to you. But it's really important to spend time identifying those core personas, because that's going to help you um, really understand how you're going to target each and, uh, each and every one of them. And you might target them very, very differently. So I'll give you again an example for workbooks. From a workbooks perspective, we sell CRM and marketing automation technology. So when we target an account, we know that we have to usually engage with the head of sales, the head of marketing. We probably also will engage because we target mid-market organization, the head of the business. We might need to also engage with the person working in the IT organization because we're an IT provider. So the IT person will be involved in the, in the decision process. We might also engage with the head of finance for the business. Um, because we do CRM, we might also be engaging with the head of customer service or customer support. Each of those will have very different profile and we will target a, a head of marketing very differently than the way we would target um, you know, a, a head of customer service, for example. Very different message. We probably would use different channel to engage with that person. So you can see where actually getting under the skin of your persona is going to make your personalization even better because you would have already started personalization at an account level based on the demographics of that um, account. But now you're going even deeper, one layer down, where you're starting to understand the people within that business and what drives them, what are their big pains and, and, and issues and how potentially as an organization you can provide products and services that will help that persona address those challenges. Alex, any, any comments on the buying persona? Yeah, I think the, the only other thing to add there is that w obviously with the ABM approach, you're typically going after um, slightly, or you can, you know, depending on what strategy you take, you can be going after slightly bigger deals. Uh, you're probably working in the enterprise a bit more where decisions are made by committee rather than by individuals or you know, rather than one or two people, it's more likely to be six or seven people. So understanding the personas, understanding the group dynamic and, and how that group operates um, and, and their, the group KPIs and, and metrics becomes really important. So this type of research along with the ideal customer profile, again, the, the more you can do on that upfront uh, makes you much more efficient uh, and more effective further down the line. 
and and you know you can you can really use again your existing customer base to to get some inkling to start with at the beginning on you know how decisions are being made in in that type of accounts so you know interviewing your existing customers the ones that you've used as a reference for your lookalike uh, search that would be a typical starting point on where you can and how you can build those personas so interviewing different people within a specific customer that you think is an ideal customer for you might be give you some inkling on you know how the dynamics is working within those accounts and more importantly for each of those personas what are the key triggers and pain points and if you interview quite a few of them you'll start getting a little bit more of a picture that will help you define what you need to do and how you want to approach your, your target ABM list. The third thing that you need to get a handle on is what you're going to leverage in order to engage with those accounts. So it's really looking at your content strategy. So you need to map your content. If you're doing strategic uh, ABM against each of the accounts within, uh, within that list, you also need to look at mapping your content against each persona. As, as I said, you might target, you know, very very different people within an organization and you will need very different content to address those different personas and the last element of your um, content needs to look at how that content matches the typical stages of a buying cycle yeah because at each stage the expectation of your prospect or customers will be slightly different so you've got top of the funnel and top of the funnel, obviously, your content needs to be focused on education. Yeah, it's about identifying the pain points uh, that your persona or this account is facing and starting to educate them on the potential resolution of that pain point. Effective content there, it has to be informative, it has to be educational, but still quite light. It's about problem and solution awareness. At the middle of the funnel, that's more an evaluation stage. And at that stage, you're looking at prospecting, starting to really engaging with your content. They're starting to, you know, they, they, they're taking action a little bit more proactively. Your content should obviously be educating still, but it should begin to really start the process of positioning your company as the solution to that account's challenge or that persona's challenge. So starting to provide more insight, uh, more details, and provide greater value. And then the further you go down into your funnel, the more it's about convincing that account that basically your products and services are the right answer. So it's about you know, removing any inkling of a certainty of doubts that you can help them be the answer to, to the pain points that they currently have. So you need to map your content across the buyer's journey and ensure that you have it ready when your program starts. So it's not good about you know, just thinking top of the funnel, but then you know, some of those accounts might you know, kind of respond quite favorably at that point. You need to have your content mapped out throughout the entire buying journey at the beginning of your program. You might do tweaks. I mean, it's not uh, an idea of you know, being perfect from day one, but you need to have elements for all of those stages when you start your program, yeah? Um, in terms of content, we, always, we often say that um, ABM and the challenger sales go very well together. Um, Alex, do you, do you want to give a bit of, a, of an insight into that? Because actually it's really relevant around the content that the approach you're taking. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, Ch Challenger is, is relevant normally anyway, especially with ABM, but in the current climate, uh, it's becoming even more relevant. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Challenger sale or the Challenger customer. Um, some research done by the CEB group um, after the last financial crisis in 2008. Uh, and what they found was a, a, a trend towards the what they call the challenger sale, a type of approach where uh, by, by taking that approach, people were still effectively uh, selling during that crisis. And really what they're talking about there, there's three, there's three things they talk about, teaching, tailoring, and taking control. So teaching 
the tailoring fits very much into what we're talking about with ABM because it's all about personalization. It's about adding real insight and value with the content that you're delivering. And that content is delivered you know, by persona or even you know, directly to a particular a targeted person. Uh, and the last part then is, is taking control. And, and I think the key there is that with ABM, <clears throat> you're deciding what the target customers or target profiles are that you're going after. So as opposed to relying on inbound uh, leads coming in where you don't have so much control over that, that target, with ABM you have absolute control because you're deciding what your target account lists are um, for your uh, ABM strategy. So I say Challenger and ABM go like hand in glove, they, they fit very well together. Uh, and I recommend if anyone hasn't uh, looked into that, it's something worth uh, investigating. Okay. And then final stage is really implementing your ABM strategy, right? So before you even start, the first thing I would say, uh, I would ask you to do is to really define what are the objective of, the, of your ABM campaign. You need to be clear on why you are doing it. What do you want to achieve as an organization that you are not achieving right now? What is the aim of the ABM program? The second thing that you need to um, agree on, and again, this has to really be a true partnership between sales and marketing at that point, really, really, you know, kind of defining what do we want to get out of this program? Who do we want to target? So let's have an agreement on which buyer personas we're going to target. Is it all of them, all the ones that we've identified, or are we going to hone in on a few specific ones that we really want to, uh, you know, focus on? Then obviously you need to agree on the core messages, the value proposition, and also the creative that you're going to deploy throughout your campaign. You also need to define what the channels you are going to use in order to engage with your audience. So you've got contents, you've got your core messages, you've got your target audience, you know where you're doing it. Now is how you're going to engage with those accounts, which tactics are you going to employ in order to drive um, the activities with those, um, you know, the engagement, sorry, with those accounts. And there's many channels that you can use. You know, we're talking marketing emails, we're talking sales emails, we're talking direct mails, we could talk about, you know, online social media, um, marketing online, retargeting, remarketing, in live events, you know, uh, in person events, sorry, virtual events, um, webinars. There are so many channels that we that we can use as marketers and sales to engage with the, those uh, uh, organization. But you need to define really how you're going to employ those channels and whether all of the channels are applicable or for some target audience, some might not be. So, for example. We've, uh, I've just given you a screenshot. I mean, it's very, very small, but it, it's about understanding how those different tactics are going to flow through the campaign. What is the frequency of engagement with the, um, with the account? So you can see on the screen here, the cadence. Are we going to do it every day? Are we going to do it every week? And again, it will all depend on who you're targeting, what message you are targeting them with, which audience within those accounts you are targeting. Um, so that cadence you will have to define, uh, you know, based on your own uh, on your own organisation. Then you're going to define the delivery methods. So here you can see on day one we thought, you know, video email might be the right approach. Then on day two the business development team. So your kind of, you know, uh, your your sales organisation will get involved and, and pick up the phone. Then obviously, which piece of content that you've mapped earlier, you're going to be leveraging within that um, uh, tactic, and what is the outcome you want out of it? And the outcome is really looking at what KPI you want to get. Um, you know, how you're going to monitor whether this ABM approach is working and whether that specific tactic has helped you know penetrate that account and, and move it um, move it along. So. The last element that you need to look at is your KPIs. What are you going to track when you're running your ABM? 
And again, those KPIs will be slightly different to your standard, um, you know, marketing activities and sales activities. KPIs for ABM will go from impressions, site traffic, you know, appointments and demo booking, opportunities creating, pipeline value, engagement within the account. So people, you know, just engaging with the content. Other criteria or KPIs could be pipeline velocity. I mean, there's so many KPIs that you know you 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 could be tracking with ABM. But as I say, you need to think very carefully what those are and you know what intelligence they will give you to enable you to refine and and improve. You know, constantly doing iterations on your ABM approach. Alex, any other comments on KPIs and? Yeah, I, I know we've got some stuff coming up on on dashboards and. Okay. Uh, and, and, Do you want to cover that? there? Yeah, I, on on this one though, I just would say um, I think the reason why this is so relevant is potentially you may have multiple campaigns uh, within one program. So if we think about the the top end, the strategic one-to-one -one ABM approach, uh, you may have a campaign for each uh, person, individual within the organization, or you may have it a, a campaign for a specific set of personas. So yeah, you may have multiple campaigns within one program. Uh, and it's important to understand, as Christo was saying, you know, what's the cadence, what's the delivery method, what content do we have, but more importantly, who's going to deliver that? So who's responsible for that within the organization? Is it someone within sales? Is it someone within marketing? Is it someone within, within customer success? So having a clear plan that can be shared across the team ensures that the um, program and, and campaign is being delivered and monitored effectively. Uh, so I think that's just, just to add that to, to that piece. I'll, I'll pick up the KPIs uh, when we start talking about dashboards. Yeah, no, that's a very valid point because, again, it's a team effort, right? So it's not just marketing yeah. doing the activities or sales. It's a combination of, so understanding the responsibilities, you know, through the campaign of, of uh, each team is very important. Yeah. So we thought to kind of, um, you know, bring it to life, we would give you some examples of uh, activities that um, organization would be using uh, across the various type of, um, of ABM. So let's look at programmatic ABM to start with. So programmatic ABM, you will be looking at vertical specific value proposition, as I said, and building your relevant content. It could be white papers, blogs, infographics, specific videos aimed at that specific vertical, demos um, that you know will have specificities around the industry you're targeting, those kind of elements. Then obviously you will potentially look at strategic partnerships. Um, you know, you might want to look at uh, industry if you're looking at a programmatic approach around a vertical. You might want to look at you know um, industry-specific uh, publications, for example, that target that market and how you can collaborate with them to start building a strategy specific to that vertical. From a digital perspective, obviously you'll focus on your SEO for your website. You might uh, engage in pay-per-click around keywords associating to that um, vertical. You might want to do some LinkedIn campaigns, and you might want to do it by vertical, so you know targeting um, people within LinkedIn who are within that vertical. You might want to do it by persona, so take it one level further where you know you're targeting head of marketing, for example, within a specific industry sectors and have specific messages, adverts, um, you know, aimed at that audience. Um, you might want to start building specific landing pages on your website for those uh, specific verticals. Um, you might be doing um, some specific PR around that. So you might be looking at, um, you know, writing specific articles, highlighting the pain points of those organizations and, um, you know, having them uh, published. You might want to be doing some um, customer advocacy push. So you've got customers in those verticals who have been very successful with your products and services. You might really leverage that customer advocacy, um, you know, to, to target other accounts that look similar. 
um, you might create some specific user groups. I think you, you, you get the understanding of the type of activities that you could do at a programmatic ABM level. When you go to ABM Lite, then that becomes far more account and person based. So you're starting to be far more targeted. And that's where, for example, on LinkedIn, you can be, you know, you can start to be far more targeted. You can do emails, for example, within that account, which will be an additional type of activities that you could do. You can do small live events to target those specific um, ABM accounts. Um, you can do direct mail, which is a little bit more, you know, a little bit includes a little bit more cost that you potentially wouldn't do for programmatic ABM, but it will still give you a certain element of scale within, uh, you know, within that. Um, for ABM Lite, you might want to involve a little bit more the sales and the business development team of your organization to be targeting those accounts. And then you've got your strategic ABM. So strategic ABM that is super personalized and super focused. So you're going to be spending a lot of time and resources doing, you know, intelligence gathering, account mapping, you know, really digging into this account and, and really understanding the ins and out of that account. You're going to build bespoke value proposition and content aimed at that account specifically. So that's kind of really, really, um, you know, uh, very bespoke, and that's something that you will spend a lot of time building. Sales and BDR uh, will be very important because it's about highly personalized. So they will be even more involved than they would be for ABM Lite or programmatic ABM. From a digital perspective, I think you're going to, you know, look at how you can create microsites, for example, for an individual account. And um, everything is going to be hyper personalized. So if you're doing a direct mail, it's going to be a direct mail that, you know, is absolutely bespoke to that account. So again, quite, you know, quite high cost, but could be very, very effective. Um, and then you would potentially do even an account specific event where you invite, you know, uh, different personas and different stakeholders from a business into one event where there is nobody else outside of that account, but where you're really engaging and, 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 and getting that, that account together or the key stakeholders of that account together. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of ideas of the type of activities that you could be putting in place in your own organization, depending on which AB strategy you're, you're going with. Okay, then the next element of this webinar is about what do we need or what do you need to support ABM? So I'm going to hand over to Alex for that section. Thank you, Christelle. So, um, yeah, I think the key here is understanding all the different elements that need to be in place to, to execute ABM effectively. Uh, as you can see here, there's a few things that we can do quite quickly. Uh, we've talked about identifying uh, target accounts um, and using the uh, ideal custom profile to do that. What you can do on top of that is within, for example, a CRM platform, you can add some scoring, some insight scoring to that. So when you have your list of targeted accounts, you can then score that based on the amount of information that you have available to you. So the idea there is that you're looking to build more and more insight on that customer over time, and then you can score that. So you can see the level of improvement over time for a particular account within the ABM strategy. Uh, you want to be able to segment effectively. And again, uh, this is typically something that happens within a, a CRM platform. Uh, you want to be able to nurture the ABM account. So when we're talking about the programmatic ABM approach, Christo was talking about lots of different uh, multi-channel approaches that you could use in, in a program or a campaign, and that can be uh, included within nurturing. We've got account-based scoring. Um, again, we can look at multiple contacts and personas and the level of engagement that we have for a particular account. So you want to see all the different engagements with you know, website downloads, emails, conversations that you've had, events where you've met these people, and build up a score 
for that account based on all the different engagements across the different contacts within that particular account. Um, Christa, Christa touched on the personalization of website experiences, so having one-to-one -one based uh, unique landing pages for, for your uh, target accounts when they, when they visit the website with personalized messaging. Uh, making sure that the sales and marketing have a shared view of all ABM activities and engagement is key. And again, you can include customer success with that. Uh, I think one thing that's also really important is what, what we're really talking about here is changing the way that you go to market. So you're changing from state A to state B. And to do that, you definitely need buy-in from your senior management, uh, either the CEO or you know, your leadership team, because you know, ABM does require uh, a lot of planning and a lot of effort to get it right. And so you definitely need to have the support of, uh, of your senior management to do that. You could also look at having a dedicated uh, ABM manager or an ABM team. Uh, and you see that quite a lot with, within large organizations where they have the resource to do that. They'll just create a dedicated ABM team. Uh, and all those things really are, are very important for executing ABM effectively. Did you want to add anything there, Christelle? No, I think you've uh, you've covered it all. I mean, we use obviously our own technology at Workbooks to execute on our ABM strategy, and you know we do at Workbooks ABM light and programmatic ABM. And in order to execute on that, obviously our marketing automation tool is extremely important. From a, particularly, for example, on the programmatic ABM to personalize, but through an automated process. So. We use specific fields that we have on accounts and people in order to personalize the communication, but to do that at scale. So that's where marketing automation is really helping us. As um, Alex said, we're using you know, web analytics. So you know, we're tracking people's um, path on our website and based on what they're doing and what type of content they're engaging with, we tailor a nurture program uh, you know, based on, on that. We obviously monitor all of the scoring. So every time someone does something, uh, we, we assign a score to it so that we can see how engaged the account is because every person um, score is, is grouped at a, at a company or to an account level. So, and then obviously we're using CRM for segmentation because that's where all of the intelligence we have on the accounts is stored. Everything from engagement that feeds from marketing automation, but also all of the demographic that we've, you know, we've, we've researched is all stored in one place. So the segmentation is then very easy um, and enables us to be quite effective in the way we target those accounts. Great, thank you. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, as Christo mentioned earlier, is, is measuring your results. So how, how do we measure whether our ABM campaigns are effective or not? So I think the first thing to point out is that the metrics that you're going to use or the KPIs you're going to use to measure your ABM campaign effectiveness is different than more traditional marketing metrics, sales and marketing metrics for inbound. Um, so typically on you know inbound we're focused on you know number of leads, lead conversion, you know, MQLs to SQLs, website traffic and things like that. That's not so relevant for ABM. Uh, so ABM is more around uh, the level of engagement that we have with a particular uh, account, uh, how how effectively it's progressing through the pipeline, uh, the speed at which it's, it's it's going through the pipeline, and you know volume and value. So so what you may end up having when you first start implementing ABM is you may end up with two pipelines, an inbound pipeline and an ABM pipeline, sorry, and an ABM uh, dashboard and an and a, uh, inbound dashboard uh, with set different sets of mat metrics. And this is an example here of a dashboard we use uh, internally around ABM, where we're really focusing on the level of engagement and activity we have around those accounts. Uh, we're looking at the amount of um, progress we're making in terms of research and engagement with a particular set of uh, target accounts. Uh, and we're looking to score that based on things like you know, the number of uh, downloads they've made or the number of emails that they've opened, uh, the amount of phone calls we've had, we've actually had some form of engagement. So the metrics are slightly different um, for ABM as they are for more traditional 
uh, inbound marketing. And, and I think that dashboard is, is very useful as a um, as a way of getting sales and marketing engaged, um, you know, on a regular basis. So we review those dashboards, um, you know, on, on a weekly basis between sales and marketing, just to kind of understand, you know, how much activities has happened on the accounts as agreed with the, you know, with the, the, the tactics flow that we have, you know, what has been the outcome of those engagement and those tactics, and, you know, do we need to change anything, you know, what's working, what's not working, you know, what's the plan for the forthcoming weeks, and etc. It really gives the focus and enable both teams to understand and have complete transparency on what's, what's happening around those accounts. Yeah, and, and you know, you can still apply the same uh, you know, ABM, AB testing and the, the same kind of criteria that, that you do in more traditional marketing, that's the same. And, and also the key here is to try and stay agile. So although we're, we're implementing, you know, fairly strategic uh, ABM plans, that, that doesn't mean they have to become, you know, slow. Uh, they can still be agile. We still need to do the testing to make sure that what we're doing is, is, is working and if not, change it quickly um, so that it does start to work. Okay. So, in conclusion, uh, yeah, it, it is probably the ultimate sales and marketing program, but I think the, the key there is it is sales and marketing. So, this isn't something that can be done exclusively by one team or the other, uh, and removing silos within the business is really important. Uh, it can be applied to different levels, as we discussed earlier, and that's something that you know each organization will need to uh, work out and identify for themselves uh, as to what they will do, what their go-to-market will be around ABM. Will it be, you know, strategic one-to-one -one in its purest sense, or will it be a bit of a combination of all three? Uh, get the basics right first, definitely. Um, so, you know, people always say, well, how, how do we start ABM? What do, what do we do first? And I always say, well, it's a bit like eating an elephant. You do it one bite at a time. So start small, but start now uh, and just refine as you go through it, you'll, you'll learn as you go through, um, you'll, you'll start to implement something and then oh, let's do a re, you know, reiterate that and improve that based on what we've done. So, and again, typically it takes probably a year to, to get ABM into a position where it's working effectively to start with. Uh, but then, you, you know, as I said, you refine that um, over time. Uh, Definitely look at tools like CRM and marketing automation. They can uh, help you execute ABM much more effectively and give you the control and processes and metrics that you need uh, to be effective. Um, and you know, define your KPIs up front. So what is it you need to measure uh, around engagement for ABM that, that's going to work effectively? Look at these regularly and share them amongst the team. You know, don't be um, Kind of shy and coming forward make sure you share the metrics across the business where necessary certainly within sales and marketing and certainly within the leadership team uh, this is a you know it's a, it's a, it's a, a team effort great and that's yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So we we've actually nearly taken the full uh, the full hour, but there was a lot of uh, things to cover, I guess. Um, hopefully that's been useful. We're going to just open for maybe one or two questions because unfortunately we don't have much more time. Um, so if you want to ask a question, you can put it into the panel on your uh, go to webinar. Um, let's have a look. Right, so we've got one question, which is, what are the typical challenges of implementing ABM? Um, so I think we've covered quite a few of those. You know, it's, it's about the planning, I guess. Um, you know, you need to really carefully identify your ident um, ideal customer uh, profile. That is absolutely key to your success. Um, you need to dig further into your personas, and that takes time and effort. And it needs you, you need to really look into your customer base to get some of that information to start with and then refine it over time. But I think for me, the biggest challenge is to get the two teams working together. So it's about, this is, you know, as Alex said, this is the ultimate sales and marketing program. So if your two teams don't work well together, that's the program is not going to be successful. So it's very, very important to get the team working well together. Alex, any yeah. anything you want to add to that? 
No, not really. I think that's that's absolutely the key. Uh, is making sure the teams work effectively together. Um, spend more time at the beginning doing the planning, getting the ideal customer profile, getting the you know the target list right, working on the programs. Uh, do do that work up front. Um, you know, flip the mentality around what you're doing. You, you're almost turning the funnel upside down. Um, because of the approach, you know, the one-to-one and personalization approach, which is which is very different. Um, but yeah, I'd say the, the key things there, the key challenge is just, just spend more time up front uh, defining things and being clear uh, with the direction that the company is, is going with ABM to make it uh, as effective as possible. Okay, well, we've run out of town of time. So thank you very much for joining. Um, you will receive a copy of the recording of this webinar um, over the next couple of days. So thank you very much and have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.